Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Rim Shots with Sean, brought to you by Bar Stools and Band Talk. And I have a, uh, you know what? I met some new friends here. We uh, were getting set up for this interview. I have Tom, I have Doug, I have Tyler, I have Trey. The band is October Noir, and they're actually surprised that I got that right out of the gate. But that's the, uh, you know, that's the the French pronounce or the pr- French uh, word for black. So there you go, uh, gentlemen. Welcome. Hey, hey. Glad to be here. what's up? So Tom, I'll start with you. So uh, your your publicist uh, Raquel sent me the the album. Uh, I I loved it, man. Talk about the production because uh, it's um, it's new, but not like I guess as like the the sound isn't what you typically hear. Uh, yeah. It's kind of got a little bit of a throwback. I'd almost say, man, almost a, an analog analogy type sound to to what you're doing. Yeah, so analog is really what I prefer above all else. Um, but I think more more than anything, just having the clarity. I want to be able to hear each instrument that that's happening there. Um, the way that I record things is is very different. It, they're big sessions in in things that most bands you might get 16, 24 tracks out of it. Uh, with us, we, we're hampering in around fifty two tracks. So these are big builds, but just that that sound. I don't like a lot of over compression that bands are using these days. It gets everything very muddy and splattery. Um, so I try to leave some breathing room and and, and headspace as much as I possibly can. Well, um, and I mean, it, you know, as a drummer, I appreciate that because I was I was listening to something a couple of weeks ago, and it almost sounded robotic. It was just so precise, and um, yep. I miss some of that loosey goosey kind of human feel to, to to tracks when you're when you're listening to them. Right. And a lot of a lot of bands, that's what they do. They they run with pre-programmed drums and um or they just they set everything up and it's right on time, right on cue, right on the markers. Um we do kind of a cross hybrid breed in, in a lot of that, uh, with the drums. I know we I think we run superior drummer three. So it's all naturally recorded drum instruments, but we have a guy use an electric kit and run it through MIDI and you know, Tyler, he'll come in and he'll he'll lay it all out. But we'll do a little bit of cleanup here and there. But I still want to have that natural kind of uh, drumming feel to it. Like, it is human. Absolutely. Because, you know, it's funny. I was listening to uh, to Heaven and Hell the other day. And when it goes into the, the verse part and the drums slow down, you don't get mm-hmm. that in a, in a recording anymore. So that's cool. Right. Um, okay. So we'll go to, to Tyler because he's got all the axes in the background there. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I would say that uh, you got you, – geez, man, you got to – Half a million dollars of hardware sitting on your uh, on your back. Um, oh yeah. Who uh, in, in terms of your writing? Uh, you know who are the main writers in the band? Uh, I'd say I'd say the main the main lyricist is Tom. Yep. Uh, he. So our songs kind of start with an idea that's bred from Tom, and we kind of shape it and mold it into what becomes the final product, and uh, that can sometimes be. Uh, very smooth and sometimes it's a little more involving but yeah uh the the main writers tom uh a lot of the ideas come but but then again i mean there have been times where we've there have been lyrics or uh riffs that have been written and we kind of dive around that but it's mainly from his brain and we just kind of uh all accept that and love that and <laughs> it all it uh, the finished product is what you want right so it always winds up being just right somehow with all yeah. of us. Like the, uh, the trick to all of that is like, you know, we got Thomas, the common filter, like we'll all bring our own individual stuff uh, into the band and uh, you know, uh, having one person at the helm um, makes it all cohesive. And I, and I'm going to say too, that's Doug, by the way, Doug is the only guy who uh, uh, he's, He's thinking about a name change. We're not sure, but uh, I will say <laughs> album's coming out September 22nd. That's correct. Correct. And it seems like a long time away. A lot of people and, and maybe trail, I'll go to you. We'll go around the horn, but um, there's a lot of, I guess, preamble before something comes out. So, you know, the things in the can for a number of months, you're doing some maybe social media, you're doing different things. It seems a long time away, but that's going to creep up on you really quickly before you know it, boom, that album's out and, and you're on to, to promoting it. Right. Yeah, and it's it's the same way in the writing process too, and the recording process. Like I, you know, back in the first two albums, I would tell the guys, I was like, "Look, this thing's gonna be honest before we fucking know it. We've got to get started now because there is a lot more that goes into it on the back end when it when it is complete." Uh, this one we actually did very well with. We had a a lot of breathing room to to get it out there and then start promoting. So, um, so 
I mean, I get the presser and I, I, I saw the influences. Had I um, heard the material without getting the presser, mm-hmm. I would have been hard pressed to put my finger on, you know, I, I, I might have picked out maybe a little bit of a type typo negative thing. Tom mm-hmm. in places, and uh, hopefully you don't consider this insulting, but in places, um, uh, I felt you sounded almost like uh, uh, Zach Wild in uh, Black Label Society. I don't know if that's something wow. that you were going for, but that kind of that growly mid range, you know, really bassy sound. Yeah, no, that is not something I was aiming for at all. Um, but it's really funny because you know a lot of people they have their own perceptions and things and what they're hearing too. And, uh, you know, fucking Gary Newman's wife thought I sounded exactly like Elvis Presley, you know, (laughs) I'm like, what the fuck? (laughs) So, but she heard whatever she heard, but then I've heard, all right, it sounds like David Bowie. Um, but yeah, so it's cool to hear those different things that are going on in there. Cause I I don't focus on that, man. I just, you know, I'm focusing on whatever ideas in my head lyrically, um, or, you know, just in a, in a note pattern. And I just strive off of that. So we got to get Trey involved here. And Trey said he was having some problems. Uh, can you can you see us now, brother? Yeah. Right on. Um, so talk to me a little bit about, I guess, your process. And 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 you know, we we glossed on a little bit with you know the the, the what you're using for drums and that. But what, what's your process in terms from you know from writing to getting in the studio? For me, for all you guys, how how do you put it together? Uh, it starts with just me at the house jamming riffs all fucking day, and then I bring it to fucking Tom, and he tells me it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> that is typical. Yep. Tom, Tom, sounds like, Tom sounds like he's a hard guy to work with. <laughs> <laughs> no, he just knows what to do. He's so, all right. He, he has a slow hand, so he's all right. <laughs> well, but here's, here's the thing, and uh, it's been my experience because... Um, I'm a drummer myself and I, I record with people as well as, as you know, my own band, you need somebody in there that has that kind of steady hand on the wheel that when you think it takes good enough, somebody's got to have the, uh, the stones to say, you know what, you can do better. Is that a fair statement? That is an absolutely fair statement. And I try to tell other people this, uh, a lot of mistakes that I see with a lot of bands, especially local bands is they don't have it figured out. Every, they want everybody to write and do everything because it's their instrument. So I understand the process of giving them, the credit for that but a lot of times you wind up with this conglomerate of bullshit and nothing's really flowing or it could be better but nobody says anything and you're left with it's almost like uh learning to play an instrument when you're in high school and uh there's not enough time and development there so it's good to have people at the helm that are steering it um so you do get uh, mm-hmm. something better out of it all right you know, as, as far as uh... hold, hold that thought hold that thought because we're going to take a little break. we got to pay some bills. We're, we're not a big enough time podcast that we, we get to go do this for free. So we're going to take a little break. We're going to come back. We're going to pick up with uh, – that was Doug there. I, I can kind of see that the, the shades will we'll come back after this. Welcome back to Rim Shots with Sean. I am here with the boys from Black Door. I love the name. Uh, just before I, I cut, the, cut you guys off, Doug, you were about to make a point about uh, the processes as we were discussing. Um, yeah. So, um, you know, we were, uh, we were saying that it's important to have someone at the helm. That's the common filter for creating a cohesive sound. Um, but one of the advantages that we have in this band is that pretty much all of us are multi-instrumentalists. Like, um, we can all contribute to any single part of the arrangement. Like if we got an idea, we can, we can all contribute to it. Um, it's interesting you bring that up because that seems to be more of a common thing now. Like when I was kind of coming up, you focus on one thing. I mean, maybe you played a little piano and whatnot, but you were a piano and a piano player slash guitar player or a piano player slash drummer. But now it seems there's an awful lot of guys that are out there that can literally play anything. Um, do you find it helps you guys when you're putting your putting your material together and you're in the studio to try to get that get uh, get, get things down? I think so. Uh, a lot of what happens that I, I've always said, you know, I don't give a fuck who records it as long as it's done the best that it's mm-hmm. going to be in, in that time. So, um, you know, but at the, at the end of the day, the guy's name that's attached to the instrument is who's getting the credit. And, you know, that doesn't bother me. So, so as we mentioned, September 22nd, uh, this album is coming out and the title is Letters to Existence. And what's the background behind that? Um, it, so everything I write is very personal to, uh, towards my life or things that are happening in my life. And it was just, it was at a moment, a uh, very dark moment. So a lot of the, the songs cover that material in that ground. 
Um, but yeah, it's just kind of like a, an homage to fucking just wanting to kill yourself, I guess. So you're writing yourself little suicide notes. <laughs> <laughs> glad, glad you're still here, but I mean, you know, it's, you know, no, 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 no. therapeutic, yeah. right? <laughs> I'm a eunuch. Yes, I am a eunuch. No, it's I said therapeutic. <laughs> oh, therapeutic. Oh, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> um, so uh, again, how long did it take you guys to get this 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 album together? Like, I guess from stem to stern, start to finish, where it was, I guess, written, recorded, mastered, and ready to go. It was actually over a year. So yeah, yeah. we sat back on a little bit. So was it so is it fair to say some of this material might have came when you know all the nonsense was going on where things were shut down and you couldn't go anywhere or do anything? Uh not necessarily. I mean, we, we kind of did our own stuff back in that that time frame when that was happening. You know, and of course being in Florida, you know, we were shut down for like three months and then everything right. was like, no, fuck that, mm -hmm. we're continuing on. Um, but yeah, I mean, there was a lot of like, you know, the BLM stuff was firing off. So we did like a cover of race war from Carnivore to kind of be like a response song to take a jab or something, you know. I, I like to stir a little controversy from time to time. But, Nothing um, wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. Um, so I, I'm, I'm sitting here counting, doing mental math here. It's a one, two, three, four piece band. Yep. Um, one of the things that seems to be a hot topic, and obviously you guys are going to go out and 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 gig this this album and and your other albums and. I'm going to get all you guys involved because it seems to be a hot topic. Eddie Trunk's always on the case. I'll start with you, Tyler. Um, do you guys use tracks live? Do you need to use tracks live or you do everything on your own and boom, what it is, it is. Well, we, we do have a fair amount of, of uh, backing in the music. And I, I'm, I don't, I feel like if you come to see us live, you want to hear it just like you've heard it on album, right? Yep. So we do use backing. We do. But I don't know. I, I've heard a lot of people throw a lot of hate about that. But if you're listening to us on stage and it sounds just like the album and we're all giving you the instruments as well and there's just some backing involved. So your favorite piece or part on a song could be something that's incorporated in the backing, right? And if, it, if that's not there, you're going to be mad as shit. You're going to be pissed. I mean, I, I've seen some of the best bands in the world go out and not use their backing, and it's terrible. You see bands quit their tour over not having their backing. Right. It's because they're trying to they're trying to convey to the audience what they've been listening to on album for half a year, right? So I think that's uh, I think that's very important to have some backing because it feel it, it. There's no there's no dead space in in any of our shows. And and I think you know what, uh, and I'm going to go around the horn on this. Uh, Trey, your two cents, and I mean the reason why I'm asking it's just it's always a hot topic. I I've had the uh, I've had the, I don't know if you call it fortune or whatever to have uh, my podcast on Blabbermouth about nine or ten times, and of the nine or ten times it's been posted, four of them have involved backing tracks, and that's kind of the headline. So it's one of those things where it's hot topic. Trey, your thoughts on it? I don't give a shit. <laughs> I like this guy, man. I like this guy. Right here. I just don't care. I mean, it needs to be there. If it's in the song, you, that's what you want to hear live, like Tyler said. Tom, yeah, I, I agree, man. There's there's violins and things that are happening. Uh, you know, we cover the ground of keyboards as the, it's primarily set. We've got the bass. You know, there might be some elements to where you want to fluff a little on the vocal work, so you just kind of add in your harmonies or, or some of the backing there to to give it a little bit more depth. Um, but yeah, I really do try and set the songs up, even in the writing process, not to be extremely overproduced to where you cannot replicate it, but also give enough in the live environment where it, it caters to it. Um, and Doug, I'll, I'll go to you before I give you my two cents, because you guys, I think are, you're on the same page uh, with me, but Doug, your, your thoughts. Yeah. Um, so, you know, this, this all goes into, um, preparation and you know i don't think there's any loss of artistic integrity in beefing up the sound that you're uh you're conveying live you know people are coming to see a show to have an auditory and visual experience and you got to give them everything that you possibly can in order to make an impression so like there's there's nothing wrong with uh using a little bit of backing tracks i think the people that are against it are likening it more to lip syncing 
to yeah. where like uh, if you're if you're faking your performance, that's an entirely different deal. That's where artistic integrity kind of uh, is brought into the uh, the equation. But as far as uh, using backing in a live setting where you've got instruments playing like you've got musicians playing all the primary instruments, I don't see a problem with that. Uh, and you know what? Uh, I'd fight to almost a death with somebody in this because in my mind, I'm a drummer. I, I use a click track live. It's a skill set, right? It's mm-hmm. it's one of those things where I find the people that attack it the most are the people that can't do it. Um, and it's you're, a skill set that yeah. not everybody can do. Right. And that's the same thing for us. We run click, but the click also gives us our light show that's custom tailored. So that way it stays in sync with whatever's happening in the song. So everything's on the production line. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's all about it, preparation. It, it is. And you know what? That's a great point because as I'm listening to these tunes, um, you know, I'm thinking, man, I, I would love to see this show because I'm, I'm thinking you guys probably have a very theatrical kind of live performance when you do this. Is that the, is that an accurate statement? I think more accurately, I wouldn't say theatrical, but I definitely say atmospheric. You know, we incorporate the fog and the lighting to to produce the emotion of what might be happening in the song. Yeah, so I wouldn't say so much theatrical because I, I would think of like having other extras up there dancing and, and you know, doing whatever. <laughs> Fair yeah, enough. Just, yeah. All right, boys, we're going to take one more break. We're going to come back. We're going to uh, get the word out about this album on the flip side after this. Welcome back to Rim Shots with Sean. I'm here with October Noir. So it's, uh, I guess, ta- is, your last name is Noir. Well, not my actual, no, it's going to be my station. I'm not going to oh. give you my actual name. Well, they know that's going to cool, say hidden a little bit. No, absolutely, man. Uh, you you got to keep uh, you got to keep people that are looking for uh, money and stuff away from you, right? So, right. Um, but I'm here with Doug, Tom, Tyler, and Trey. Who Trey Trey's a man that just doesn't care. I love it, man. He's uh, he's down there. He's being chill. We're trying to get him involved. We're trying to do what we can here. Um, What's that? What's your scene a- like down there? What's your scene like down there? Where 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 you're uh, lo- located? There's a lot of heavy metal, uh, extreme metal, post core, hardcore, uh, death. A lot Crash. of punk. Yeah, even punk. Yeah, punk's big yeah. around here, too. Lots so. of punk. Yeah. Um, The range of your tunes, and we said it in the first two segments. Uh, sorry, September 22nd, you guys have your album coming out. Um, I heard, I, I think, I, I can't remember exactly which tune it was, but when this, there was a long keyboard intro. When the vocals came in, it was almost the Cookie Monster stuff, and then you went to a singing thing. So it was very... Um, I was like, okay, right on, uh, a yeah. dark metal band. But then you guys kind of shift the gears and went to another thing. Um, Halo. Mm-hmm. As you're crafting Halo. these songs, is it just something that happens, or you sit down and go, okay, this is the way it's going to go. This is how we're going to craft it. This is the way it's going to come together. No, it, it does kind of flow naturally, um, but it's also something where I'm, in the back of my mind, I'm always looking at it going, okay, how do we make something different? How do we keep it fresh throughout the progression of the album? Because I don't want to wind up with the songs that all sound the same. Um, so I like kind of taking different things and manipulate them. Um, so, Hey, we're going to get Trey involved here for a second. So what, like, uh, have you guys, you know, everything was shut down. You said you guys were only shut down for three months. Did you guys get back out there gigging right away or did you concentrate on your writing and getting your material out? <clears throat> well, I actually wasn't in this band during the shutdown. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Band last December. Oh, well, so you're the newbie then. Yeah. yeah. That's why he doesn't say shit. He just shuts up and takes it. Well, yep. well everybody needs one of those too, Tom. Right? <laughs> <Sure. laughs> um, so okay, so I, I'm gonna I'm gonna assume, you know, that you would have went out and saw these guys or heard these guys before. Um, fair statement. Yeah, we uh, played a show together. Right on. So uh, the circumstances of you joining the band, you know, you can explain what they are, but uh, you get the call and it's like, yeah, I'm doing something else but i'm going to these guys or how how did that kind of uh arrive for you uh we saw that they uh needed a guitar player on facebook so i contacted them and tyler hit me up eventually saying i had to join the band so i joined the band (laughs) (laughs) well the real story is is we need we wanted doug to go to keyboards because it's impossible to find a keyboardist and me and tom were thinking me and tom and doug were talking and was like there's how do we find the right person? And I, we sat back on it for a week, and I was like, man, it's got to be Trey. Like Trey is the only person that can fill this role because it, it, he's got, he's got the look, he's got everything. He Trey's the probably the best, one of the best guitar players in our scene in our area. I was like, if it's not Trey, it's, it's not anybody. 
and we'll have to go back to the drawing board. So, luckily, Trey came on. Make- now, is this new feedback that you're hearing, Trey? Have they, it, you know, if they, if they imparted that on you before? No, they're usually not that nice. Well, there you go. So <laughs> we're, we're making a lot of progress here today, gentlemen. This is great. It's great for album sales because everybody can see when this interview comes out that uh, not only are you, uh, you know, all active in the band, but you all get along, and, and that's important, right? Chemistry, as, <laughs> as Tyler just said, chemistry is a very important part of a band. Is that a fair statement? Very fair. Well, I mean, yeah. you're all you're all brothers. I mean, this is a business that we spend so much time together. You've got to, you got to have that family type bond, because if not, you're really fucked when it comes, or you're really in trouble when it comes to the business side. I mean, and and you gotta you gotta get along with your guys, and I think that we uh, do it very well, very well with that. Yeah, I think I think we've all been in bands where there's one guy that people don't like, and uh, you know, sometimes it's easier to just put up with stuff than replace them, but. Um, you know, to be able to have, you know, a group that does get along, I think is very part, uh, very important, not only for, you know, chemistry, but just making sure that the business rolls forward. Yeah. I do want to make one statement completely off topic just to bring it out there because it's coming sure. to your show first. Rock Hell has made it happen. We will be in Los Angeles October 15th to play the Whiskey A Go-Go. So that just came through. Well, so- no, you know what? That is, that's a very cool show. Um. Have you guys been out there before? Nope. Um, I I have I I've never been there. I've never played there, but I have a number of friends that they basically say if you go to LA and you go to the whiskey, you might as well call it a, a wasted trip. It wasn't even it wasn't even worth wow. your while. <laughs> yeah, that's what that's what I've heard too. But I I think I think that I'm hoping that it will be a little different for us. Um, what what I what I know is, and I had a friend that played there, and the first thing I mean, I grew up listen to all the bands that played there and it was like the first thing he says as you walk in it's actually smaller than what you think it is but yeah. it's got such a vibe that it's so yeah. cool so hey congrats guys that's uh that's major that's amazing um and just in time you're so you're almost be out for a couple weeks before you hit that so that'll be that'll be okay. good uh good promo for you guys yep yep that's the goal so um in what you guys are doing i, I do find it interesting that you have keyboard not you know it, only um because keyboard sometimes tends to be a texture instrument for some for some bands. Um, when I heard that first song, it was like, okay, what do I get here? There's a, the keyboard intro, um, but you guys use it kind of as a, I'd call it a valuable to, you know a valuable tool for your songs. Um, where I guess does the keyboard fit in terms of the overall? You know, is it there as a texture thing? Is it a is it a main thing for you guys? No, I, I look at it as it being a guitar. Um, it needs to have those prominent dances going on. Um, that can elevate and it, that also lends to help giving the guitar rhythm parts, you know, and, and staying inside the, the rhythm zone, uh, but then flipping it and you can have some of the keyboard backing that does just provide that texture uh, or have the keyboard sit back all together while the guitar lead or solo is happening. So, yeah, yeah, I think it lends just as important as any other instrument. So in terms of this material in this album, obviously, you know, September 22nd, we we're going to beat it to death in this, uh, in this interview, but um for people that have heard it and listened to it, what's the feedback been? So far, it's incredible. They are very impressed. Uh, they see how much we grow with each album release that, that's really come out and hit. Uh, not only just in the production, but you know, in the writing too. Uh, this one, this one did take a very different turn than what we normally accustom uh, to writing and, and putting out there. So there's a lot more '80s influence with this one. So a lot of people are picking up on that. But very, very good positive feedback. Um, you know, it's interesting because again, when I get the press uh, info and I'm looking at it, um, I'm glad I had it because I, I wouldn't have picked out the influences based upon what I was hearing, um, which I think bodes very well for you guys because you're influenced by people, but you're not, I guess, ripping them off and sounding like them. You're just kind of using what you took from them to make your own sound. I don't know. There's, ty- there's typo negative. What do you mean? What do you mean? <laughs> well, <laughs> maybe, but it depends on who you ask. Right. It, it, it does. Yeah. It's, it's all in perception. Um, you know, and again, I, I, I take it for what it's worth, but typically, you know, I do this and somebody sends me, a, you know, a, a, an album that's like, I can pick out, oh yeah, it sounds like this, sounds like that. I didn't get that. I mean, I to be honest with you, uh, when Raquel sent me The Presser, I actually listened to the music before and I was like, who does this sound like? And then went, oh, okay, you know, that makes a little bit of sense to me. Um, so, you know, for, for this guy up here in Canada that, uh, you know, you fooled him because I like I typically have a pretty good ear. And uh, I think that that's very interesting for what you guys are doing. 
Yeah, I think other musicians would understand more because there is a lot more going on than what's scratched at the surface. Um, and the influences that do come in from song to song are influences from things you'd probably never guess. So, well, and, and creativity or cre creatively, you know, it's great because I mean, like, <laughs> there's a thousand and one bands that all sound the same, right? That's right. And uh, and I'm not saying it's just because I'm sitting here doing the interview, but it was a unique sound that I heard, which is really. And when you mentioned Bowie, I was like, you know what? I didn't get that really, yeah. but it was like, um, uh, I, I guess I can hear tinge of his in there now. So I mean, that's it's a very cool thing that the you know that it's taking shape like that. Yeah, yeah, I like it. I like it that way. All right, Jen. So we we did the old scoop about the whiskey a go go. This will be out in a couple of days. So uh, where are my viewers going to find out about you guys? How are they going to? Uh, get the album when it's out. Where are they going to find you? Um, new album is uh, going to come out September 22nd. We're going to be on all platforms you can possibly find us on. Um, you know, um, we're most active on Facebook. Um, uh, good news about that one. We actually just reached 10,000 uh, followers there. Oh, congrats. So CDs, physical CD copies. You can find mm -hmm. it on our website www.octobernoir.org. Um, that's the only place to get those. We don't have them in stores or anything, but yeah, major streaming platforms. Well, and I'll give you guys a kudos because I know building social media is tough, um, and to have ten thousand followers is significant. Some people go because there's always a compare game, right, on social media. Oh, you get ten thousand. Well, this guy's got a hundred. Most hundred. people won't even touch you unless your numbers are big enough. That's mm -hmm. correct. But it's the other a joke. thing. It is, but the other thing too is your hundred thousand followers. You might only have a thousand people that are giving two craps what you're doing, right? So to have yep. ten thousand and build it like that, I think is important and it speaks well. So that that's great, guys. Look, I want to thank you for doing this. We, um, you know, our intention was to make sure that everybody uh, found out about the album. And it's uh, are they going to be able to get it in Canada? Are you guys doing distribution up here? Are they going to you know through the website or Spotify or how? Yeah. They're gonna do it? If you go through the website, I mean, you, we'll ship internationally. It doesn't matter where. So, yeah, Canada. We actually do a lot of shipments to Canada. So, they are a, a pretty good fan base that's over there. Thanks. Gents, thanks a lot for doing this. Appreciate your time. October Noir for kids. Get out there. Check them out. Thanks, y'all. Peace. Thank you.